What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today and we're doing some potential history and today we have got Germany could not win World War 2 part 2. We're really looking forward to finding out the, some more information about this and what potential history has to say. Um, really enjoyed the last one, yeah. it was actually quite funny, um, just enjoyed it in general. If you guys haven't already, please head over to Potential Histories page, a link will be in the description box down below. If you guys are enjoying our content, like, comment, subscribe, subscribe. hit that notification bell, but we are just going to jump straight into this one. Let's do this. Excellent work with the German Miss, pal. Here's to hoping better sources will be used in the future. However, our intel has picked up reports of continued resistance in the Comet sections. Mentions of Dunkirk and who not to invade seem widespread. We will be dropping you directly into the Comet section with your primary objective being to root out these myths. Be cautious, though. Reports indicate that the Wereboos will be armed with Cold War era memoirs and David <laughs> Irving books. Godspeed, <laughs> Lieutenant. This video is brought to you by Dashlane. Stay secure on there <coughs> and never forget a password again. More on that later. So you may recall around six months ago, I made a video about how due to Germany's lacking in the population, industrial, and raw material sectors, they could not have pulled out a victory in the war they started in 1939. And it sort of got out of hand. I think we should read the comments. <laughs> the other day, as I was reading the comment section there, I found that along with some people agreeing with me, there were a lot of dissenting opinions of yet more ways that people thought the final victory could be achieved. And I am here today to respond to them, and also probably clear up what I meant at the end of the last video, talking about limited use of alternative history. Here are a few more ways Germany okay. could not have won World War II. One thing I have seen brought up a few times is that if Hitler had not let the British Expeditionary Force get away at Dunkirk, that later the troops could not be used during Operation Overlord and thus no Western Front, with the implication that the German troops could have been sent east to stop the Soviets. This, however, has two problems. Firstly, the BEF was not simply allowed to leave France, as this narrative suggests. In Mein Kampf, Hitler yeah. does speak highly of the British at times and suggests that they could be a potential ally. But this is clearly without a strong grasp of British culture and political policy and was always discussed with Germany being above Britain and having them be administrators of the Reich, but only if they could shake their, quote, Jewish influence. Furthermore, he realized that Britain was against his intentions in the East and would become a barrier there. All this being said, by the time of the invasion of France, Britain was definitely an enemy and Hitler was doing them no favors. So then why Dunkirk? Well, this was an operational failing, not a peaceful gesture. On May 15, 1940, the Germans broke through the French 2nd and 9th armies and steamed ahead night and day, thanks in part to some tablet boys, towards the coast. Although these gains were good for the Germans, <laughs> the mechanized forces were quickly running out of supplies and were leaving their flanks exposed, which opened them to being cut off, the result of which could cause ruin for the German plans. It is at this point a nervous Hitler, being counseled by Generals von Kluge and von Rundstedt, gave a halt order to secure the flanks and allow the exhausted panzer divisions to refit. Check out this video by Mark Gerges for more. Upon the halt, our favorite okay. drug-addled flyboy, Goering, promised the Luftwaffe could destroy <laughs> the British at Dunkirk, and although he failed, I would hardly call the actions of the Luftwaffe just letting the British go. With thousands being killed, over 200 ships being sunk, over 100 planes shot down, and the loss of all the BEF's equipment, Hitler even realized that the halt was an error and resumed the attack while the evacuation was underway, and it was only successful mm. due to the brave French soldiers that held out until it was complete. But even if he had let them go, there are still more problems asserting that this means a German victory in the war. Britain had to rearm all the soldiers evacuated, which is a huge loss and took some time. This force when returned to England was not in any way ready to turn around and invade France, although the troop reserves were good to have if Germany decided to invade. But they were not in fighting condition for a long time. 
But most importantly, Britain is not the only nation present at D-Day. A combined landing force of American, British, and Canadian forces, yeah. along with smaller groups from other countries, landed and fought on the Western Front. Although the troop loss, if Dunkirk had failed, may have limited Britain's number of troops, the United States, having only mobilized about 9% of its population in the course of the war, could have very realistically filled in the gaps as it did in reality with the British equipment losses. But all of this still doesn't 100%. take into account where the real war is being fought, in the East. The German army will be decidedly on its back foot after Kursk, and the Soviets have massive offensives planned in 1944 regardless of what the Western Allies do. Would the defeat of Germany mm. have taken longer without the Western Front opening? Of course it would. But by 1944, the Soviets have a decisive upper hand and will push the Germans back to Berlin. So to say the war could have been shifted if the British had 300,000 fewer troops ignores the reality of what the Germans were truly up against by 1944. Right, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. This is another one I saw a lot. Just don't invade the Soviet Union, or just don't declare war on the United States. And although these comments are puzzling on the surface, as removing a major combatant redefines what the war is, and you are now describing how to win a smaller conflict, there are reasons this doesn't work that are all to do with character motivation and why these things were going to happen yeah. unless you fundamentally change who the Germans and Hitler were, and then strain to fiction. Let's first start with the Soviet Union. If you read Mein Kampf, don't do it, it's not a very good book, or listen to a lot of Hitler's speeches, both in public and in private, he fixates on this idea of Judeo-Bolshevism, which is a rather outdated term that grew out of the idea of a Jewish conspiracy that had created communism, and the two were the biggest evils facing the Aryan nation. There's a whole rabbit hole to go down here with multiple theorists and their ideas, but I'm not going to go into it here. <laughs> but that's the basic <laughs> idea, and Hitler subscribed to it. And the result of this is Hitler's yeah, main goal being to book. destroy the Soviet Union and become the savior of the Aryan people in his eyes. And in the process, wiping out millions of subhuman Slavs and resettle the land with Germans. Hitler saw this as his destiny, meaning he was going to do it at some point, and that this fictitious Hitler that would win World War II by not invading the East is just that. You just have to be so he ceases becoming the be Hitler that. that we know and that existed, and now so we're talking sure about a made-up yes. story. Now, as to why the Soviet Union was invaded when it was comes down to <clears> two <throat> things. Resources and, frankly, paranoia. Germany, as I outlined in my previous video on this, spent a lot of the war with fairly limited oil resources and knew that it couldn't support this attack any later than June of 41 with all the fuel that the Battle of Britain was yeah. consuming. And even the trade with the Soviet Union would not make up for this deficit. So the High Command felt they had to go in when they did before the army would not be able to move as they needed to finish the campaign by September. That looks the time crazy. in which the High Command figured the Soviet Union would collapse in on itself under the weight of the German attack. And I'll point you to David Stahill again for more information on that. The other aspect was, as I said, paranoia. I've often seen this assertion stated in a different way of don't break the alliance with the Soviet Union, although I wouldn't even frame the German-Soviet non-aggression pact as an alliance in the way you think of with the yeah. Axis and allies. The treaty was much more in the vein of you don't get in our way, we won't get in your way, let's trade some stuff. And it was very uneasy at many points before and during its existence, becoming most volatile during combat between German and Soviet soldiers during the Poland campaign, after the Germans overran the territory that was designated as theirs and moved into territory promised to the Soviets that actually contained oil fields, making it not very subtle what the Germans mm. were trying to do. Both Stalin and oh. Hitler knew that some form of war was coming, just not when and who would start it, but going out of their way for the most part to not provoke it. And they didn't trust each other whatsoever. Now, I'm not implying any kind of Savorov preventative war type thing. The Soviet Union was refitting and probably wouldn't be ready for a large war until at least mid-1942. But with these two ideologically opposing powers, taking territory so quickly right next to each other, it was something that was bound to happen as soon as one of them yeah. felt they were in a position to make the first move. Two great By 1941, the Germans felt they were, yeah, they took the opportunity. Absolutely For more on this, and clash. the German-Soviet yeah. clashings in Poland, I'll point you towards Stephen Kotkin's second book in his Stalin series, or this video of him talking about it. The declaration of war on the U.S. is a bit more tricky, especially given that Hitler was aware of the industrial capacity of the nation. However, he saw the U.S. as very internally focused and figured that it would take them much longer to mobilize than it did. Hitler always planned for war with the United States, as outlined in his second book, written but not published, in 1928, but wanted Ooh, to put it I off until he was ready, often skipping on details about how it would be done. He began to assume that, due to some anti-German sentiments from Roosevelt, the Americans would declare war in 1942 coming to the aid of the Allies like they did in World War I. Piggybacking off the previous statements about the Soviets, he figured he could end the war in the East and turn and fight the West. 
This feeling ended, though, as the Soviet campaign continued to drag on and 1942 loomed. The German Navy had been asking for war with the United States for some time, as Hitler had been holding them back to not provoke them, knowing that going against the U.S. Navy, the Kriegsmarine would come up lacking. Hitler's solution to this was Japan, which had a large navy that he thought could tie up the Americans until he was done in Russia, then turn westward and save his plan. He constantly reassured mm. the Japanese that Germany would throw in with them if they expanded their territory south into U.S.-held islands. This was among many attempts to get Germany and Japan to fight the same enemy, which also included trying to get Japan to invade the Soviet Union from the east in June. Although Japan kept Hitler in the dark as to when they were going to attack, Hitler was very pleased when they did and immediately lifted all restrictions on his navy to attack U.S. ships, and later declared war a few days later after his foreign minister, Joachim von Ribbentrop, said, A great power does not allow itself to be declared war upon, it declares war on others. Now, this decision may have been flawed with the hindsight of putting too much faith in the Japanese Navy and underestimating the U.S.'s ability to fight on two fronts and mobilize so quickly, but knowing that Hitler did plan to fight the U.S. way back in the 20s, the timing may be bad, given what we know now, but it was not something that he was just not going to do, in the same way he was not going to just opt out of invading the Soviet Union. Makes sense. He just wouldn't done... This is the one that I see the, the most. The Take the British out before you turn east. As you if it was that simple. So. The Germans tried this. <laughs> First not, by attempting to bomb the British into submission, which didn't work. And mm -hmm. second, by planning the invasion of the British home island in an operation named Sea Lion. This was going to be the amphibious assault that would take Britain out of the war, and plans were drawn up and early preparations were made. But before going through with it, the Germans themselves realized this wasn't going to work and canceled it. The short answer for why is the Royal Navy and the inability of the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe to control the channel. The German Navy would be unable to keep the channel clear of British warships to enable troops and supplies to reach the British coast unless the army's mm -hmm. landing was on a very narrow front, resulting in less water needing to be covered. Knowing the coast was going to be heavily defended, the army rejected this plan as they would need a wide landing front so they were not just feeding men into a meat grinder. In short, the Germans did not yeah. have the material to carry out a successful landing without it either bogging down and being cut off on the ground or being simply sunk on the way to its destination. In the 70s, the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst wargamed the scenario with conditions favorable to the Germans and came up with the operation being a total failure. Some commenters have gone as far as to suggest using paratroopers to take the British down, but I think you need to only look as far as Crete and Arnhem to see how badly an unsupported airborne operation can go. The Germans would still have yeah. to land by sea to resupply them and get relief troops on the ground, and the Royal Navy was too large an possible. obstacle to allow this to happen, or... even by the yeah. Germans' own admission. And British people don't go down without a fight, so the guerrillas would yeah. be One just One particular comment out of all of them really stood out to me. It began with, if the Nazis weren't Nazis, they would have won. And I think this really speaks to the core of my point. Alternative history is fun. It makes for good Hoi Ford yeah. games. But when really talking about it seriously, it's really hard to come by any academic conclusions outside of a few days of speculation. Because you begin building assumption on assumption on assumption, and before you know mm -hmm. it, you've changed the motivations and decision-making patterns of everybody you're talking about. And you are then just writing fan fiction. This is your brain. This is your brain on <laughs> alternative history. Would Germany have won World War II if the Nazis weren't in power? Maybe. But it's also equally likely they wouldn't have started the war, or joined the Allies, or anything else. If there's no basis in reality to do with the people you are talking about in your assumption, what's the point? Germany decided to start a war that within a little over two years would see them taking on three superpowers at once, with the resources of most of the world behind them. Add in strategic mistakes and cool. intelligence failures, it paints a very grim picture from the start, regardless of decisions made after the fact. Speaking of intelligence failures... It's just the end. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I really, really did enjoy that. But obviously, I agree with what he's saying at the end there. Obviously, that um, you can't change the Nazis, you know. But that is, I think that is the big, big what if, is what if the, the, the Nazis didn't get into power? How strong would Germany have become, you know? Mm. Um, that's definitely a big what if. But definitely, the reasons he put out there, I definitely agree. Just, just It was just going to be too difficult once they took on three superpowers, you know? And like Hitler was always going to go after the Soviet Union. Yeah. Always, that was always going to happen, you know. And then of course, whenever a country gets too big, America are going to definitely get involved, yeah. you know. Um, it was inevitable, but I really enjoyed that. Yeah, definitely. I love how it was like how we just edited it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The editing as well. If you have any more suggestions for potential histories content, please drop it in the comments box down below. If you guys are enjoying our content, like, comment. Subscribe. subscribe hit that notification bell and we will catch you in the next video see you in the next one